All right, so last week uh, we were working on color. This week we are doing texture. Uh, and then just like my other weeks, I'm gonna try to get as many animal textures covered as we can. Uh, and then we're gonna do this in two ways. Uh, I'm gonna show you what I pulled online first off. So this was the first or second image that came up when I Google searched animal textures. Um, if you have a specific animal you wanna look up, you can also look that up as well and uh, study that today. But I'm gonna start out by drawing, copying off of these, some different animal textures uh, in a flat way, like their tiles. And then for our second exercise, we're going to try to draw those same textures on a 3D surface. Um, so we're gonna do a 2D version and then a 3D version. I just wanna show you guys what I'm looking at to give you a chance to find your own references. So I'm gonna start on my paper drawing out a grid and it doesn't have to be huge. You can think of these as like texture samples Move it centered more. I don't know. Just want to draw a box. The lines don't have to be straight. So just for study. Divide that in half. Let's do eight boxes. They're not the same size, it's okay. So what I'm gonna do for our first exercise is I'm gonna fill in each of these boxes with a different texture like what I was looking at online. Uh, don't, you can copy me if you want to, but don't feel like you have to do the exact same textures if you have a different favorite animal that you wanna do. Let me pull up my reference so I can look at it. So I think for my first box, I'm just going to do fur, like a general thick fur. A lot of times when people are trying to draw a fur texture, I'll do this over off to the side. What you see from a lot of newbie artists is that they'll just do kind of this, well, they'll go maybe all in one direction and just do dash marks, marks or scribble marks. And it gets nice and dark, but it doesn't quite look like a fur texture. And that's because fur, especially thick fur, is usually layered, is usually not all one, uh, one layer. There's gonna be short hairs in the fur, there's gonna be longer hairs, uh, there's going to be some that are way back towards the skin and then like layered on top of it. Um, so I'm, when I'm looking at my reference, I'm seeing some darker spots. I'm seeing some lighter spots, all sorts of stuff going on like that. And then there's also a direction to it. So I'm going to start off in the corner of my box and do lines coming out like that. and then another layer of lines going on top of it. So I have a bit of a darker patch. And I turn my paper a lot when I draw, that's just a habit I got into. So I can get different angles very easily. So it's a little bit random. But 
but I want some dark patches and then I want some lighter patches. I think there's a light patch going through the middle here on the reference I'm looking at. So I'm just going to mimic that. And then I'll do another layer on top. And then I'm curving my lines a little bit as well. Feel free to draw outside of the box too. A lot of what makes textures look right is the edge. So they don't have to just exist inside the box. I'm going to keep going with my layers. filling in this whole box. Some lines I'm putting closer together. Some lines are further apart. And then once I have one layer down, I can go back over and put in another layer. Until I got something that kind of feels like, like shaggy fur. Let's make some more fur out here. It's like if you stuck fur onto a square tile or like a square box or something like that. Nice. I see some of you have some animal textures on your Maddie has like a cow texture on her uh, on her camera window. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. There's my fur texture. For the second one over here, Let's do one of the cat print ones. I think I'm going to do a leopard one. So what I'm seeing with the leopard one is they have these marks that almost make a circle like that. And they're all different sizes. They're not going to be pasted the same. Some of them are turned a little bit. Some of them are lighter than other ones. And let me move in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. So for this one, I made the edge very, very hard. And this one, I made the edge a little bit scribbly. This looks more like, I think, what the fur actually looks like than this. So when I do, it does look like a face. <laughs> when I do the pattern, I'm going to try to make it a little bit scribbly. And there's a bunch of small ones. I'm going to do some small ones. And this is shorter fur, so I'm going to make the strokes very, very short. And I remember the pattern keeps going off of this tile. So I'm going to draw some where it's like half of that shape. I want them to look similar, but not identical as well. 
Let's get some more small ones. Little tiny ones. So there's another texture. If I wanted, I could even go in and add some more short strokes just to give the feeling of fur, maybe through like the middle. Because the whole thing is furry, not just the marks. But it's very short compared to this one. different kind of fur. Yeah, a lot, a lot like felt. All right, next one. I think I'll do scales for the next one. Step away from the fur. So what I'm seeing on my reference for the scales, I don't know. I'm pretty sure this is a snake. I don't know what kind of snake. Is they follow a pattern where they're shaped like this and then overlap or interlock. I'm kind of drawing the same, it's like a cone over and over again with no space in between. And there's a shadow where all of the scales overlap. So I want to make those corners kind of dark. Make sure I get this edge. Now they're not they're not all going to be the same size. If I had a template or something like that, I can make them all the same size, but they're not going to be the same size. And that's actually going to help us when we move in to doing our 3D versions. And I'm going kind of fast just because I want to do as many textures as I can today. So these are starting to get bigger, these scales that I'm drawing here. They're starting to get kind of big, which is okay. The scales can be different sizes. I'm gonna go back and try to transition into making them smaller. When you look at a snake, 
especially around the head, the scales end up getting very small. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I just use my finger for blending a lot of time. If you have to blend a big area, I just use my finger. If you've drawn kind of big boxes and it's taking a long time to fill up the area, you know, you can divide it up into a smaller box or just do part of the box. It's kind of look like stones. Yeah, you'll get a lot of graphite on your fingers. You just gotta wash your fingers off. Art is always messy. I always have stuff all over my fingers <laughs> from art projects. So I'm just darkening up in between these scales. We had someone in the chat mention alligator. I don't know if that was a request or not for an alligator texture, but I think that'd be a good idea to do for my next one. So I think I'm gonna do an alligator sort of texture because they are scaled, but it's a little bit different of a texture. They are bigger and flatter scales than like a snake scale would be. And then in between, they'll have small rounder bits like that. Yeah, they look kind of wart-like. Wart and I think it just depends if we're looking at the back of the alligator or the belly of the alligator. The reference I'm seeing kind of looks like that, where there are rows of scales, like bricks, and then down towards the bottom, they're more circular. There's a row of circles right here. And to get that tough texture over the top of them, I'm just gonna lightly shade. And then shade in between the scales so they pop up a little bit. And then around these like wart things, I'm just gonna shade one side of them so they pop up. Now the scales are also dark as well. So just to tie them all together, I'm gonna to very, very lightly run my pencil over the whole thing. Some of these wart guys got kind of lost. I'm gonna go back over the warts. All right. I'm gonna pause for a second. Another one we haven't done is skin. My reference has an elephant skin one. So it's very, very rough. They're random looking wrinkles all over but they seem to be pulling towards the middle so i'm just going to use very shaky lines the directions that i see the skin going hey this one's pulled up more 
and then there are tinier, littler wrinkles coming off. So I'm just gonna use tiny, faint lines to pull that up. And then wrinkles have shadows on them. So wherever I put a line for a wrinkle, I'm just gonna do a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of shading. I see your suggestion for feathers in the chat, so I think that's an excellent idea. We'll do that next. I'm not seeing feathers on my reference though, so I'll have to get a better feather reference. Because there are also, just like there are different kinds of fur, there are different kinds of feathers. I'm just gonna keep shading these tiny little wrinkles. And then the skin is also more of a dark gray. So I'm gonna lightly shade over everything. It helps tie the whole texture together. This is gonna test your shading and your value value shading how light can you shade where it needs to be light and then how dark where it needs to be dark All right, I'm just looking up a reference for me for feather textures. So we can do that next. So I'm gonna show you what I found real quick. So just like there are different kinds of fur, there are also different kinds of, of feathers. So uh, like these are really long and they're also layered on top of each other as well. So sort of similar to fur in that regard, you can kind of see they're curving a little bit and they're all layered up. Let me find, that's nice draw, like drawing one. So you can see there's light patches and dark patches. It's not the same value all the way through. Here, here's a different kind of feather where it's a little more downy. They're a little more loose. So I'm gonna draw a feather texture where the feather is curved on the ends of it. And I'm just gonna pick a random spot and draw a little U shape because I'm seeing a U shape for the feather. It's gonna be a little bit like drawing scales. If you look at a parakeet, especially a parakeet's face around their eyes, they actually have scales. They're not feathered all over. It's kind of cool. They're kind of similar to snakes in that way. And then the feathers are getting smaller. I'm going to make them smaller towards one corner and then bigger towards the other corner. And I'm not using one line to make a feather. like a bunch of little lines. Let 
Maybe they can come off outside this box. Now the structure if, uh, that I'm seeing for this feather kind of looks like that where you have a stem and then all of these follicle-like things are coming off of that stem. So I want to mimic that in my texture pattern. I'm not going to draw every single one, just like we don't draw every single hair in fur. But I'm just going to give them little stems and pull out a couple of those loose feathers. Maybe make it darker on this end. If I want some individual feathers to stand out, I just need tiny little dark spots around the feather. Before I move on to my last two boxes, were there any other texture requests that you want to see me do? Grasshopper. Hmm. Let's see what I find when I look up grasshopper texture. You're right, we don't have any insect type textures yet. Okay, I don't know what I'm seeing with that, but this looks pretty good. All right, I'm going to show you guys what I found. All right, so check this out. It looks a lot like a leaf is what it's reminding me of. So there are these yellow veins and little like, it's like a stained glass window almost. There are a bunch of tiny little lines and then bigger lines making different shapes, different boxes. Quills is another good one. Let's do, let's do grasshopper and then quills like a porcupine for our last one. I think what I'm gonna do for this grasshopper one is I'm gonna start off just shading really lightly over the whole box. And then to make those little yellow lines, I'm gonna take my kneaded eraser Make a very small end on it and then erase out some box shapes. If you don't have a kneaded eraser, you can try just using the edge of the eraser or you can do it the traditional way where you draw the boxes. I'm gonna have to reinforce these box shapes like that. 
But I want the I line between. I'm not going to see. Do we have a question? And then once I have like these box shapes, I can go back in and make even smaller and smaller lines to complete the texture. They have big window shapes, and then I'm going to make even smaller little veins. Can even do little lines like that. Looks very much like a leaf. Some of these lines are very tiny. Just do other smaller lines with my pencil. Has anyone ever seen like a butterfly up close? Those, those are cool too. They have a lot of texture to them because um, they can be fuzzy. You don't think of them as being fuzzy because we're seeing them from far away. Yeah, bees, bees are fluffy too. Yeah, we don't think of, of insects and bees and stuff as being fluffy, but they're really fluffy. <laughs> Someone should have like a bee petting zoo. That would be super cool. My textures are running into each other. That's okay though. I've got stung by a bee too. All right, I'm gonna look up porcupine quills for my last one. So this is what I found for the porcupine. A little bit like the hair where it's in layers or fur, but where fur is a lot thinner and fine, 
the porcupine quills are really, really thick. And then there are bands of white and then bands of black on the texture. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to leave bands that are just the white of the paper and then go really, really dark to make the rest of those quills. So I'm gonna start, let's go in this direction and let's say there's a big quill sticking out like this. I'm gonna go dark, white, dark, white, dark, like that. Wonder if I just alternate. I'll start looking like quills. I have a shorter quill here. Kind of a mix of following the same pattern over and over, but also being random about it too. A little bit of randomness. They look like really weird fingers right now. Or weird grass. It's like alien grass. So I'm drawing some shorter quills and then some longer quills and some really long quills. And I'm just keeping the white spots and the dark spots a little bit random. Kind of fill in. Looks like it's bursting out of the box over here. Because I did these edges coming out. All right, let me recenter this on the camera a little bit better. So we have fur, we have like a leopardy, I think I'm spelling leopard wrong. <laughs> Let's actually double check this. Yes, I am spelling leopard wrong. L E O P A R D. Then we have scales. Then we have 
some gatory type scales. We have elephant skin, feathers. We have like, uh, I think this is grasshopper wings. I'm gonna write hopper wings. And then quills. All right. So we have a, a couple, we have a really good variety of texture tiles here. What we're going to do next, I'm just going to draw a cylinder. We're going to pretend that this cylinder is the body of an animal. just to be really simple, because we're just focusing on the texture for today. But I want a 3D shape. Okay, so let's pretend that I'm gonna put uh, like the leopard texture onto the cylinder. If I did it the exact same way over this whole thing, my cylinder is gonna end up looking flat. Um, cause I just did a flat texture all over this box. Uh, if you remember, for those of you who are here when we did color, a lot of animals have what's called counter shading where the back is dark, sort of a darker color, and then the belly is a lighter color. So it'll be darker up here and then lighter up here, and it helps them with camouflage. We want to mimic that with our texture. And then it also gives us less work to do because we don't have to cover this whole thing with the same pattern. So what I'm gonna do with my leopardy print texture is I'm gonna start at the back of the animal and for the this top part, those spots are going to be bigger and darker. And as I move across my cylinder, they're going to get lighter and smaller. I'm just going to do a couple so you can kind of see. And the fur on big cats works this way too. It gets lighter and lighter as it goes down to its belly and then eventually fades out. So we're gonna do a fading out gradient, if you will, where it's darker at the top and then it gets lighter eventually to white on the bottom. Sometimes when you're doing things aiming for realism, they will give you little cheats, little less work like that. So you don't have to cover the whole thing with the same amount of work. I'm gonna try to go a little faster than I normally would because I wanna do more than one. edge. Another thing I want to pay attention to is the edge of my cylinder. It's not going to be a flat line. I'm just doing little scribbly short lines. Edges really help with textures. I think I made these guys too close together at the top. That's okay. I think they're actually further apart. 
So I'm just going to work my way down across the cylinder. And then fade out on this pattern. So as I get down here, they're just like little wavy lines that are much lighter, much easier to do. So if this were a drawing of a full leopard, it was actually like leopard shaped, I could use the exact same process and that's how I would shade and texture the leopard. Darker up top and then lighter, less detail towards the belly. I'm gonna do, let's do a shorter one and make this like a snake to show you how that works. With a different texture. So the same thing with that counter shading. My scales are going to be clustered and pretty big at the back of my cylinder. Like if this was a snake, it would be the back of the snake. And then I'm trying to make it look like the scales are wrapping around. And then they're going to get smaller and lighter, faster, a little easier to do as I get down towards the bottom. Layton, there was a question about the main project of the class. Did, did you want everyone following along drawing cylinders and yeah. textures? Yeah, so if you drew different textures than me or if you have a favorite one, draw a cylinder and try to wrap that same texture around the cylinder. If you feel like drawing an outline of a whole animal, you could do that too. We are running out of time, so I thought just doing a cylinder be a little faster. Let me just focus on the texture. So you see, it should start to look and feel a little bumpy for this one for the scales. And I have mine all going the same direction. You can shade them too if you want. They're usually darker at the top and then go to lighter at the bottom. See how much time we got. Okay. We are quickly running out of time. Does anybody want to share their texture map so far? I want to make sure you guys have time to share things before we run out. Here's Kat. Um, I just read a chocolate on my face. Sorry about that. Um, here's what I have so far. Nice. Here, I need to make my view bigger so I can actually see what you're doing. Very nice. Yeah, I like how you got the overlap. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, do we have another hand raise tater shot? I'm slow, so I only got 
three of the sample. No worries. But you also really drew like big, big, uh... Yeah, I really like the way the scales turned out, though. I do, too. Those look really nice. Yeah. They look like pebbles, almost. Like, you could touch them. Yeah. Oh, Excellent. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share what they've been working on? Did anybody try a different texture than the ones that I did? Keep um, so instead of the textures that you did, I ended up doing a toucan and I ended up drawing the actual toucan. So nice, yeah. <laughs> and I noticed toucans actually do not have feathers, they're kind of fluffy. They, they yeah, it, there are <laughs> different kinds of, of textures. And if you look around their eyes, a lot of times they have scales for just their eyes because the feathers grow out of the scales. Uh, yeah, so they'll have different textures over the whole thing. So that would be a cool thing to do because um, the wings will have different kind of feathers than maybe like the body of the toucan. Toucans are also mostly black too. So sometimes it can be a little hard to tell, but that's a great project to just do a whole bird and see how many different textures you can get mm -hmm. onto that one bird. I'm gonna do a fur one that's like a really shaggy fur. There are different kinds of fur too, just like there are different kinds of feathers. So for this one, I'm gonna have the fur pop up and then get lighter and lighter as it goes down, darker and darker towards the top. Fur always wraps around something. So I'm just imagining the cylinder being like an animal skin and that the fur would pop up and grow out of the animal skin in a specific direction like that. But I want to make sure this edge has a lot of pencil marks on it. It's nice and fluffy. Let's go over the edge of the cylinder. This is going to be, looks like very matted fur. Someone needs a haircut. Go all the way down. So if you notice there are bumps that naturally happened as I was drawing my layers. When we draw cartoons and we simplify fur, you know, like that, that's what it's mimicking. So you don't have to have the edge of your creatures be a straight line. As I try to do a very short version of that for this one. Does anybody else want to share what, we're, what they've been working on, even if it's not an animal? Can I show? Yeah. Can we switch to the thing? There we go. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it looks, it looks very bumpy. What have you done so far? And I like that you shaded underneath it too. A lot more 3D. Yeah, Shalai, that's fine. Um, I'm still not done with it, but it's close. I did a drawing of my three OCs. They're all sisters, Bellamy, Rosalind, and Liv. Nice. Are those eyes on her clothes? Um, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, one of the things I really liked about Liv was that um, in between her necklace with the, with the 
I would say they're pebbles that are attached to her necklace. In the middle is an eye, so it kind of resembles like the Illuminati kind of. Okay, symbol. yeah. The triangle yeah. in the eye, the all seeing eye. Yeah, all seeing eye. <laughs> I like the band-aid on, I forget what, what her name was, but over her nose. Was that a band-aid? Yeah, it was a band-aid. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was um Bellamy, I believe. Yeah, Bellamy. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, Tater, did you have a piece you wanted to show as well? Yeah, it's not done yet, but I started working on Captain Rex from Clone Wars. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> and the nice thing about Clone Wars is if you can draw Captain Rex... Uh, you can draw, draw any of them. Any of them. <laughs> and they all have the same hairline. Every character, yep. not just the clones. Every character has like this Iron Man helmet hairline. <laughs> and it's very amusing to me. So That's thanks. awesome. Great shading. Great work on the shading. Scott, do you have the week list handy for what's on each week? I forget what fundamental next week is. Is it value or... Yes, let's Is see. Next week, no, uh, I have the, the list. Um, give me a second here. So next week is form. Form, okay, cool. And then space and then value. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Does anybody know what form is already? So we did like like the shape of things so we did a class online right uh let's go back to my paper the short preview for next week so we did a class online and then a class on shape so i'm just going to draw like a square so that's shape form is when you take that shape and make it more three-dimensional so that's a really simplified explanation on what form is. So instead of sticking to 2D shapes, it's more 3D shapes. Oh, we have another uh, request to show an OC. Okay, so this is my friend's OC. There we go. All right, now I can see it. But yeah, this is um, Evie's OC. Ah, oh, that's awesome, Evie. It's like a like a night fox or something, purple fox. That's awesome. Are you guys drawing each other's OCs? Um, yeah, we're doing um, art trades pretty frequently, so yeah. That's awesome. It's always great to see other people uh, draw your characters. Nice. All right, are there any questions um, about textures before we wrap up class or any other um, last minute shares? All right, well, as I said, for next week, everyone is going to be focusing on form. Uh, so be sure to check that out. We are what I'm going to do is uh, we've already done a class on a bunch of animal, animal shapes. So I want to start narrowing that down uh, for the last week of this series, which is going to be in February. I want to do just a really detailed illustration of a specific animal, or I might do like a chimera thing um, that's a combination of animals. I'm not sure yet. So if you have a favorite animal or an animal you really want to work on, get a reference for it and then bring it to next week and we'll try to break down the forms uh, of our animals. Are there any other questions on what we're doing? Cool, awesome guys. Well, thank you for coming and then I will see you next week. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.